Australia and sledging, especially in the era of war and ponting, where the team was almost invincible, with either bat or ball, was a love story better than Twilight. Down or up, sledging was their way to intimidate their opposition and the battle was yeah, half won there. Shown. There's always a limit to it, but Australians or their opponent at times would go over the top by invading their personal space in the form of incidents or cursing families. And that's exactly what happened on May 12, 2003, during a game between Australia and West Indies. It could easily have been one of the greatest tests ever, with what an epic chase that still stands. Instead, after it was marred by the ugliest of verbal rows between the legend of the sport and one of the architects of the victory. It is remembered as the match where Glenn McGrath and Ram Nare Sarwan had gone for each other. McGrath had not played the first two tests of the series at Borda and Queen's Park Oval, both of which Australia had won comfortably in the absence of Shane Vaughan, who was serving a ban, and McGrath himself. He had arrived only at the request of the plea of his wife Jane, who was suffering from secondary cancer. Jane had told her husband, West Indies lost by 9 wickets at Kenningston Oval. McGrath played in the test and finished without a wicket, though he went for a mere 64 of his 36 overs, thanks to his relentless accuracy. When the teams moved to St. John's, a white voice was definitely on the cards for Steve Waugh's men. Winning the toss and electing to bat on a dry wicket and hope to put up a big first innings total was dashed by then 23-year-old right arm medium Jermaine Lawson, accounting for three at the top and four off the tail, restricting Australia to a paltry total of 240. In reply, West Indies succumbed to the brilliance of Bickel, Lee and McGrath, only for Lara to save the day with a fine 68. Going to day two and three, the pitch eased out a bit for batting, and Australian openers put on a show in their second innings with hundreds by Langer, who carried his bat throughout his innings, and a swashbuckling 177 by Hayden. Lawson, the hero for West Indies in the first innings, could only bowl six overs in second as an injury ruled him out. Other Australian batters failed to take the advantage of the platform set by openers as Raw remained unbeaten at 45. The Windies were 237 on 4, needing 181 runs to win, a feat they would eventually achieve to set a new world record. But at that point, it was this ugly incident that drew attention, with Chandrapal and Sarwan looking set for big hundreds and helping West Indies do the unthinkable. McGrath, who wasn't going through a good spell of bowling, decided to go towards plan B of Aussies, and that was to sledge and put the pair under pressure. Guess what? It backfired, which it really does. And then this happened. Overs, shouting, screaming, and pointing your fingers. In a frustrating ploy to get under Servan's skin, he said, Servan came up with the reply. In the heat of the moment, he shot back. Now, Normally, McGrath would have taken it in his stride, as it was the usual banter. But his wife Jane at that point was suffering from cancer, which would ultimately take her life some years later. Now, in Servan's defense, he did not know that Jane was unwell. Had he, the odds are that he would not have said anything. Other players got involved, and the umpires have to defuse the situation. That incident uplifted Servan and the West Indies as they went to chase the highest total in test of 418. With hundreds by Servan and Chandra Paul, and a vital contribution in the form of 8th wicket partnership by Omari Banks, who scored 47, and Vasper Drakes scored 27, which eventually helped the West Indies to win a test against Australia after 10 years. Though Australia won the series 3-1, the intensity to do the whitewash is what made the Aussies invincibles during that era. McGrath later confessed. War, on the other hand, justified McGrath's outburst. 